I started collecting, <laughs> I started collecting trophies. They're kind of hanging around the hangar all over the place. Turbulence was a hard one to beat. I became the second pilot to ever break the 400 mile an hour mark during an Air Venture Cup race. Hello. Perfect. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey guys, uh, quick announcement. And uh, before I even get into that, yes, I have blood running down my head, but I keep trying to get it to stop and it just keeps re-dripping. So just ignore that. I hit my head on some tile kind of hard. And if you can't tell, that's what I've been doing is laying tile on my back pool patio. But these showed up. I didn't think they were going to make it. They're like Christmas tree ornaments slash toys. They're scrappy and <laughs> they turned out so cool. They're rubberized, so it's more than just an ornament that's going to break. They're really flexible. They have the solar panels, the suspension, the gear, the search and rescue labeling. We have a limited number of them. We're just going to sell them for 25 bucks a piece. It is going to help us send more people into their flight training, the flight schools, get people their pilot's license. So if you want to buy a little something for Christmas to hang on your tree and help people get into aviation as their Christmas gift paid for by us with your help, we'd love for you to join us for this Christmas holiday season. Also, I was shutting down the website earlier. I just got an extension from the group that was doing it and said, listen, I want to get these out for Christmas. We're going to try and get all the orders out as quickly as we can. You should get them for Christmas, but be patient if things are a little longer. But uh, we believe we can. The people that do it for us said they're going to do everything they can to make it possible. So we love you guys. Merry Christmas. Happy holiday season. Scrappy rubberized toys are here. Shirts, hats, gear. Let's get everybody into general aviation. We love you guys. Back to work. When I first got the plane done, um, before Salt Lake City Center got to recognize the speed that this plane's gonna come out at, it made for some fun conversations because I would file IFR every time. This plane wants to be at 25,000 feet. That's where it belongs. I remember coming out of here one day, called for an IFR clearance as I passed through 7,000 feet. Salt Lake Center called back and said, Negative, we can't give you your IFR clearance. Uh, we're showing a problem with your transponder. We're showing you at 15,000 feet. No longer at 15,000 feet, leveling at 17.5, looking for IFR 250. And that was the longest pause, followed by another airplane saying, Wait, what? So you're currently at 17.5. Level 17.5. And now I'm approaching 385 knots, 17.5, on a little plane that got there in a blink of an eye. I think that was when they started to uh, recognize which airplane was Mike Petey coming out of Spanish Fork. And it made it fun because I'd come up in the air and before I, I'd, I'd click on the mic, they'd say, hey, Mike, how you doing today? Where are you headed? And it was really fun to get to know a lot of guys at Salt Lake Center, strictly based on the performance of this silly little racer. <laughs> so I got into racing aircraft long time ago because my brother Mark got invited to go to an air race with a friend who had a glass air across the way from us. And he went out and raced and did really well with his legacy and he asked me to go. I went out and raced because of Mark. Yeah, it's competitive. <laughs> a little bit of competitive nature with Mark and I, but in the best way. Though we both want to beat the other one in an air race in our modified airplanes, Mark is my biggest fan, and I am his biggest fan, right alongside with our spouses. That was the start of air racing, and I started going to an air race every month somewhere else in the country for years and years on end. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Okay. Okay. Well, I race in a couple days. I leave tomorrow. Um, this has been a heck of a journey. This is one of my single largest goals I've had in my life and I've built race plane after race plane building and working up to be able to feel confident in building a plane that goes this fast it's been a lot of work and it all comes down to a couple days from now I've had a lot of good friends and family and support and been going non-stop every day for a long long time and a lot of years so um, we're down to the end and uh, I'm excited this is this is huge for me 
Turbulence's official top speed recorded was during an Air Venture Cup race. It was uh, roughly 100 airplanes racing Gosh Gosh. Yeah, if I remember right, it was around a 400 mile race. Uh, what makes that race really fun is um, you get a lot of the Reno Air Racers at that race. You get a variety of aircraft from prop to jet to P-51 Mustangs. You get, you get everything. So it's the most number of planes all launching at once of any race in aviation, period. You literally line up close to 100 planes one after another, boom, 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 boom. and you all race 400 miles. That race, uh, you don't have enough room to put in like 40 gallons of water for your ADI to keep your aircraft from detonating because you're running your boost to 80 inches of manifold. Air Venture Cup's a little different. Air Venture Cup is, now what can you do if you aren't packing anti-detonation water sprayers, misters, pushing the engine so hard that you may need to overhaul it the next week or take it apart to get it home? What is the plane gonna do if you're gonna go run it for 400 miles? And typically, that means what is your plane gonna do at the top safe indefinite power setting? That race was one, I wanted to know, how is a plane I built to build my pharmaceutical company, traveling coast to coast to coast to coast all day, reliably, gonna fly against some of the fastest cats in the sky? And that was our Venture Cup. That was a race I got to go see how fast can it go in a booked setting, not a variety of flights that I know what it can do. I believe it was the 20 year anniversary of that air race series. It was the first time I got to race with the, the Dash 42 motor in it. All right, so five months ago was the launch of version 2.0 turbulence airplane of mine. Um, I had this up to about 325 knots. I wanted 350 plus, we've blown that away. But it was five months ago, I took a drill and I cut about a dozen holes down the wings and started modifications. I added more fuel. I put in different fuel probe systems. I had to increase the vents on the fuel lines to let enough air into the bigger motor I wanted. I installed the bigger motor, made a new motor mount, lowered the belly of the aircraft six inches, widened the entire airplane about six and a half, seven inches, changed the prop, changed the controls, redid some of the interior, dropped uh, another location for uh, fuel pods underneath for high angle of attack for steep climb. Um, there's probably 20 or 30 other things I'm forgetting, but that was five months ago and it's been a whirlwind of work, but uh, it was a success and I've got the speeds I need. Um, now I just got to make sure everything holds together and works right for the race. And um, I think we got a shot. I think we got a good shot. So <laughs> let's go. I became the second pilot to ever break the 400 mile an hour mark. When they track this speed, they're launching you from the runway, not from a drop in. Both ways to do it is great. It's just your speed's lower if you launch from a stop and you gotta build up to 385 knots at altitude versus dropping into a race at your maximum speed. It's harder to get a high speed in a race, in an Air Venture Cup race. One plane, um, which was a Canadian racer, great guy, Marty Abbott, awesome. Uh, run undefeated for a long, long time, and uh, deservingly so. A, a really hot rod, turboprop racer, uh, and a turbine legend. Most people ran a 550 to 650 horsepower Walter in it. He put in uh, near 1,000 horsepower Garrett. And he ran undefeated. I got to go race against him. He was the only pilot that broke 400 miles an hour. I think it was 401. Point two. Marty at that race was awesome. I think it was the second time he broke the 400 mile an hour mark. So had only one person had ever done it in 20 years, it was him. And then the year I got to race him, I think he did it again at like 407. And it was just staggering. So we got to do it again. I didn't know how I did until I got on the ground at the destination and he wasn't there. <laughs> yes! We just landed, I'm the first one in. I just shut down. Second guy's flying overhead right now. I'm super excited. Uh, it's official, I've got first place. We'll have to wait and see if I've broke the speed record. I think I may have. So, uh, <laughs> success! Woo! <Wow! laughs> That's when I knew, like, 
either something went wrong or Turbulence just became the fastest cat in the sky. And then I watched him come down the line, not, not too long later, but a little while later, come down and, and cross the line. Uh, everything went right. And I asked him when he came up, uh, how'd it go? Is your plane flying good? And he said, fastest ever. I think I did over 407, but you must have been smoking because you went by me. And, and I didn't know until that night at the awards banquet what my official speed was. And my sister recorded me when I heard the speed for the first time. So in first place, race number 32, and he finished it like a week ago. Because <laughs> he doesn't like to, you know, get down too, too soon before the thing. Mike Payne flying the turbulence. You ready for the speed? 438.02. <laughs> I about fell right off my chair. I could not believe it, but uh, I was going for 400. <laughs> yeah. You got it! Woo! <laughs> so it was, a, it was a little bit of a, a little bit of emotional experience <laughs> for me, honestly, to build a plane like that and then to hear the speed that I did was awesome. But what was way better than, than that was um, the other racers were just the coolest guys ever. Good for you, Mikey. <laughs> Thanks, Good buddy. Man. Thank you. I appreciate it. How's it going, brother? Good, man. <laughs> All those guys, not only I consider good friends at this point, but um, their attitude was just so complimentary and so excited, genuinely excited for me at the speed that I just threw up at my Air Venture Cup debut of Turbulence. Just the greatest guys ever. To this day, uh, I hope those guys are building faster, leaner, meaner airplanes. They probably are. I hope they come out and smoke Turbulence one day. If they do, um, I hope I get a chance to go out and try and beat that one. I do want to build another racer. <laughs> I want to go even faster. I want to be pressurized. Someone's going to beat me. <laughs> It hasn't happened yet. If I have it my way, it's gonna be me. <laughs> I would sure like to knock myself off that podium and, and build a faster cat in the sky. So that's a goal of mine. We're gonna go see if we can make it happen. Hello. Perfect. Turbulence was the the combined knowledge from multiple race builds, um, record-setting aircraft, all rolled up together. But even rolling all those together, turbulence gave me even more knowledge. And each time, you know, you add to it. That's the goal in life, is to learn a little more every day till the day you die. And hopefully do it in a way that your kids or family or someone around you can pick up where you left off. And that's how, that's how the great human race progresses. It's, it's not me, it's not you, that guy, that guy, it's, it's, it's really a neat web of connected people that slowly make little improvements on each other. And I'm just one little piece in the middle of that, hoping to, to put something else out there. But Turbulence opened me further into turboprops, faster designs, and then eventually slower designs, and then designs that try and blend fast wings, slow wings. Now with the latest build Scrappy and how unbelievably well um, that wing worked and how excited I am about its morphing capability. It's partially because of turbulence wanting to know how do I go fast? How do I go slow? How do I do both? Maybe now that I've built a slow plane, push plane, it can go a little faster than push planes typically go. Maybe I can build a hot rod fast plane and maybe slow it down at the bottom end. I'm going to see how much we can push this envelope. Turbulence, every one of these builds, they always add. So the next build, I got something more to pull off of. And we'll never stop. <laughs> we'll never stop learning. We'll never stop making mistakes. And along the way, um, everyone, hopefully, I guess it's my intro. <laughs> every time something new gets built, the whole world advances. I hope that I'm a little tiny piece of that. 
You know, what's in store for turbulence at this point? Um, pretty simple. It's, it's how I'm gonna get to and from work. I'm currently running several companies from rock quarries, crushing rocks, selling house, rocks for houses, to water technology in both evaporation and atmospheric generation and fresh water for the world I'm working on right now. Hopefully we can figure that out. Um, turbulence is how I make the world a smaller place, do more work in less time. Um, we have a short life to live. Everyone always says you can't buy more time. I'm gonna say, unless you have turbulence, because I do buy some, <laughs> just a little bit, each time I fly from one part of the country to the other. So turbulence is home where it belongs to be my, my daily driver. For me, turbulence is the ultimate daily driver to get me coast to coast all the time for the variety of things I do. Eventually, a museum, I hope. Something like that. But right now, it's my commuter. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much for watching this little mini series. All of you who asked me to, to talk about turbulence, I hope I answered most of your questions, I hope. And if you have any more, put them in the comments and I'll try and go through it and see if I missed a few I can get on those. I do appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys following these crazy builds of mine and sharing my passion of flight, my passion of engineering, building anything with our hands. Um, I love you guys for that. I love that you guys get so engaged and that you talk to me and you send me messages. And uh, I love the aviation community. All of you that have joined for this mini build series, the build series in the past, and the build series to come. I hope you stick around, follow along. We got some cool stuff coming. You guys know my drill. <laughs> Back to work.